Hey, good evening. Today's uh, Bible study Sunday school lesson is called Israel Rejects God in Favor of a Human King. The background scripture is 1 Samuel, the 8th chapter, the 1st through the 9th verse, and then the 10th chapter, the 17th through the 26th verse. And the printed passage, which we'll be reading today, is 1 Samuel 8, 4 through 7, and then chapter 10, verses 17 through 24. Anybody want to pray us in? Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jimmy. Uh, as I stated, today's lesson is Israel rejects God in favor of a human king. Background scripture is 1 Samuel, the 8th chapter, 1 through 9, and the 10th chapter, verses 17 through 26. And our printed passage is 1 Samuel 8, 4 through 7, and chapter 10, verses 17 through 24. Um, does anybody want to read 1 Samuel chapter 8, 4 through 7? I'm getting it. 1 Samuel what now? I'm sorry. Chapter 8, four, verses 4 through 7. Yes, okay. Chapter 8, verses 4 through 7. Yes. All right here. Third key, 4 through 7. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge, to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel, when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Amen. And then, Tammy, can you go to chapter 10 and read verses 17 through 24? Okay. All righty. Um, and Samuel called the people together together unto the Lord of Mishpah, and said unto the children of Israel, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and delivered you out of the Israel of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all kingdoms and all them that oppress you. And ye have this day rejected your God, who himself said, Save you out of all of your and your tribulations, and you, ye, have said unto him, Nay, but set a king all over us. Now therefore, present yourself, present yourself before the Lord by your tribe and by your thousand. You say the twenty. Read up. Read up the um, verse twenty-four, seventeen through twenty-four. Oh, okay. Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near. The tribe of Benjamin was taken. When he had caused, caused the tribes of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was taken, and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they saw him, he could not be found. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further, if the man should yet, should yet come, Thither, and the Lord answered, Behold, 
he had hid himself among the stuff. And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward. And Samuel said to all of the people, See ye him whom the Lord hath chosen, that there is none like them among all the people. And, and all the people shouted and said, God save the king. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. So, as we start off in chapter 8 of uh, 1 Samuel at the 4th verse, it says, All of the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. And the reason that these elders were gathered is because of a few things. One was because of Samuel appointing his sons as judges. They weren't the greatest uh, characters, per se. They were not good leaders, and they were not like Samuel. And then, with that came the complaining about the treatment that was being handed out by Samuel's sons. But this this is going into the next verse. But this is why they're gathering. And they're gathering to have a conversation with Samuel, Samuel, or a complaint, if you really want to say what it is, with Samuel in the regards what's going on. So in verse 5, they said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Here we go. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. So they spoke to Samuel, and they, they let him know he had aged, but this was not a big thing. This was not a major concern. He had gotten old, and they really were saying, your sons are horrible. They weren't like Samuel. They did not have what Samuel had. They were doing things they shouldn't have been doing. And this complaint was a point that truly had merit because of the sons. They were awful. And they were bad leaders, but they wanted a king. And this was the problem. Here's where the true problem comes in. The leaders wanted a king like the other nations had. They were envying other nations. They wanted the worldly ways that came with the king. And remember, they had God as their king. Now, you must understand that the king, and I mean earthly king, wasn't God's plans for us. That was going to happen. But they had to be patient, and they, they were not. They were already looking at what others had. And remember, they were supposed to be a group of priestly people. This was not supposed to be worldly people. But what they were asking for was an earthly, worldly thing. They also were following the ways of the world, and that is bad when you are following the Lord. See, you, you get in some trouble when you go with the world and then maybe follow the Lord. They were definitely going with the world. They were going away from the Lord. And they were wanting what the world offered instead of staying in God's will. And, and you'll see where they speak of what God had already done for them, but they were like, look, we want what they have, and that's how we want it. We're sick of your sons. They aren't like you. We're rejecting God, but they don't say it right here, but that's what they're truly doing. And now they have told them, appoint us a king to lead us, just like all the other nations have. Anybody want to read uh, Romans 12 and 2? Is that Dr. Hambrick running? Transformed by the renewing of your mind, and ye 
may prove what all that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Yeah, see, they they were going outside of the will of God. God had a plan for them and for a king, but it wasn't right then and there. But they were like, we want a king. We don't want to be under God's leadership. And also remember that they wanted a king and not a judge. And that's especially Samuel's sons. So in verse 6 it says, But when they said, Give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel, so he prayed to the Lord. And Samuel was playing, praying because what displeased him was that they were looking to change the way of how things were functioning. They were removing the Lord's way. That was what they were desiring to do. Who was the king? The Lord. Who was leading them? The Lord. Who was putting the law down? The Lord. And they said they wanted a different king. They were going to change the way that they were governed. And, and not only remove it from Samuel, but his sons also, but they didn't even want the Lord there. And the Lord was king over all of them. The ill consequences of which many of them at least would happen, he easily foresaw it. He knew, and which gave him great uneasiness. This made Samuel feel funny, bad, because you were going away from the one that delivered you. And, and, and what is the problem that you are having you want the world. It's not that the Lord had been bad to you. It's not that the Lord hadn't given to you. It's not that the Lord wasn't with you. You no longer wanted what the Lord gave you. That's something we all should think about at all times. Why do we go away from God? Because we don't want what he gives us. And that giving means there is rules, there is structure. And things may not go your way, but it is God's will that we must follow. And they didn't want it. They wanted it to be on their own good, what they wanted. They even told them at one time we were having problems sleeping. He wanted it. They wanted this to be their way. So in verse 7, it says, and the Lord told him, and he's speaking to Samuel right now. He says, listen to all the people who are saying to you, it is not you they rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. And, and God simply says, let's do what the people want. You want to go away from me? You want to run things your way? You don't like the provisions that are coming your way and the blessings that are coming your way and the deliverance that has been afforded to you, then let's listen to them, Samuel. Because they're rejecting God. All that I can say is if you reject the Lord, look for some serious troubles in your life. Because you reject him, but he is the creator of everything. And if he rejects you, you have nothing. They did not want the Lord, the creator of everything, to rule over them. Anybody want to read um, Proverbs 1, 24 through 26? You got it, Tammy. I'm going there. Okay. Okay, what is it? 
Proverbs 24, what now? Uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 24 through 26. God and reject him, hey, you know what? He can reject you too. If you refuse to listen to the Lord, there are consequences. There are some things that would happen. If you don't take in God's advice, uh-oh, there are things that will happen. And if by chance the Lord lets you be and turns away, Disaster will happen, and he will mock when this calamity overtakes you. How do you reject the only king? When have we become so mighty that we can reject the Lord? And please don't forget about all the provisions. The Lord takes time, even while being rejected, to take care of Samuel, though. He takes care of Samuel and Samuel's feelings by letting Samuel know that he was not rejected, but that the Lord was rejected. Because Samuel was not rejected. In other words, Samuel was in a situation where he might have taken this to heart, taken it personally. And the Lord said, no, it is not you, Samuel, that they reject they reject me. They reject my ways. And they would rather do what they would do than that be with me. So we, we skip on to chapter 10. And we go to verse 17 and 18. And I put those together. And it says, Samuel summoned the people of Israel to the Lord at Mizpah. And said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought Israel up out of Egypt and I delivered you from the power of Egypt and all the kingdoms that oppressed you. First thing you got to know, first thing you got to see. He tells them, Samuel starts to tell them. When he gets them all together, just exactly who the Lord is. You making this decision. But understand who the Lord God is. And he proceeds to let them know exactly who God has been to them. To all of them. Even in their disobedience. He has been a protector, a deliverer, and he has defeated all kingdoms that have oppressed them. Not just Egypt. Egypt. Because you notice he says, I delivered you from the power of Egypt. Don't forget that. And, and that's a big thing because you, you left the Pharaoh. You left the plagues that were there. You were covered when the season hit for the deaths. You walked through the Red Sea. And we know none of you could have parted the Red Sea. And the Pharaoh's army couldn't follow you. That's just a little thing I did for y'all. But don't forget about these other kingdoms that oppressed you. I got them. I took care of them. I am that same God. I am the one, the God of Israel. I did all of that. You may think you did something. You may see the world in this earthly way, but understand all of your deliverance, all of your protection, and all of your needs have been provided by me. 
But then Samuel says, now look at you folks, because in verse 19, but you have now rejected your God who saves you out of all your disasters and calamities. Uh-oh, we just read about that part in Proverbs. And yet you have said, no, appoint a king over us. So now present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and clans. So you rejected the one that did all the work in verses 17 and 18. And since you don't want the Lord and you have asked for an earthly king, so come on down before me. And I mean all of you, and I will give you what you desire. This is what the Lord told him to do. See, the, the truth of the matter is there was no reason to reject God as their king. Because you see what the king had done for them. How can you be that taken care of and the world be that satisfying and you still reject God? Where were our hearts at? And, and, and not only did they reject God, but you rejected a righteous king that saved you from all your trials and tribulations. In other words, if I could just say it the way I want to, this was a dumb move on the Israelites. Why would you leave this protection? So in verse 20 it says, When Samuel had all Israel come forward by tribes, the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. And this is the tribe that the king was chosen from, the tribe of Benjamin. They had won the drawing, per se, where the king would be chosen. But don't forget, if you go back in chapter 9 of this book, um, Tammy, if you want to go back to 25 and 26, you'll see where this was already known to be. Read it again. First uh, Samuel 9, 25 and 26. Oh. No, chapter 9, verse 25 through 26. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and, when they were and when they were come down from the high place into the city, Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. Uh-oh. And they arose early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, and I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel, abroad. See, he, he was already having a conversation with the king, Samuel was. Saul was going to be there. But, but the Lord has a way of doing things. So then he, he brought forth the forward the tribe of Benjamin, clan by clan, and Matri's clan was taken. Finally Saul, son of Kish, was taken, but when they looked for him, he was not to be found. See, they, they brought in all of the tribe of Benjamin and started to look at them clan by clan. They, they were separating them by their clans, and Saul was selected. Okay, But Saul was not one of those center of attention type of people. Because it tells you but when they looked for Saul, they couldn't find him. And understand that the Lord had already shared the word with Samuel that Saul would be king. And that means that the Lord's word through Samuel was going to be true. It was going to be true. And, and Saul could not be found because he was not into the limelight. He was not trying to be seen. And he did not want to be this focal point in this matter. Uh-oh, you got a shy king. And you also have to realize Saul wasn't striving to be the king. It wasn't a desire of his to be the king. 
and it wasn't a dream of his to be the king. Saul was shy. So, in verse 22, so they inquired further of the Lord, has the man come here yet? And the Lord said, yes. He has hidden himself among the supplies. Saul was hidden. He was hiding out. He didn't want this attention. It's This is his shyness. And it he wanted to be moved away from being that center of attention. It was not something that he strived for. And Saul wasn't the king because of him wanting to be the king. A lot of people want to be in charge. A lot of people want to be the leader. That was not Saul. Saul was selected to be the king. Okay? So they, they ran and brought him out. And as he stood among the people, he was a head taller than any of the others. Uh-oh. So we start describing the attributes of Saul. And this is something that was important to the people. Just like if we look at somebody and they, they, they're they in a position and we say, ooh, they look like that's them in that position. Well, Saul had to have this look that they were looking for. And as it says, he was a head taller than any of the others. So Saul was a tall man and and that was something that these people desired, a specimen for a king. I don't know anything about what he does or what he knows, but I needed a physical specimen that I could look at. And you can see where they carry it on because in verse 24 it says, Samuel said to all the people, do you see the man the Lord has chosen? There is no one like him among all the people. Then the people shouted, long live the king. See, what they, what they can see in their view was that Saul was a, a great king because of his appearance. And that's what they desired. They weren't looking for qualities and abilities. They were looking for attributes of this man. And they knew when they saw him, because they said, do you see the man the Lord has chosen? So the Lord had chosen this man. There is no one like him among all the people. Uh-oh. Then the people shouted, long live the king. The Lord even knew what they wanted. And he gave it to them. But this was really what the Lord wanted. You rejected the Lord and the Lord still put somebody in there that you wanted and don't know that you wanted, then you didn't know that the Lord had put him there. And they were looking at the visual to say that he was a great king. But remember, Samuel had conversation with this king, with Saul. And Samuel's relationship and conversation with Saul let him know, because he said there, there is no one like him among all the people. Samuel's conversation in chapter 9 with Saul probably let him know that there was no one like him among all the people. Yeah, he was shy. He didn't want to be the center of attention, but when you looked and saw this man... They saw the physical, but Samuel had a conversation that let him know that there was no one like him among all these people. And then the people shouted, long live the king. In other words, we got what we wanted. Long live the king. Amen. I want to 
point a, a, a little boy there. Yeah, he drink water. Come on, Pastor Black. Yeah, yeah, that's a lie. He, 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 he on top of that. Ain't too much I can I do with that guy. I used to hear y'all say he didn't need no meat on that ball, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you look at you, you look at the father of the son. Uh, he didn't want to be the part of his father's rules and regulations. And the world looked, looked better to him and then that uh, being the rule of revelation his father had. And the scriptures say, Man, not into thy own understanding, but in all thy ways, act not a day, and we direct your path. When you start looking at your own understanding, you're looking at what the world got to offer you. Oh. And then, like I heard Pastor Lyle say, when you start doing this, you got to get in a world of trouble because there's consequences behind sin. You rejected God. God. Uh, he told uh, Samuel, you know, that Samuel, he was like, wow, what's wrong with these people? If they God told them people, and they talk about uh, 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 a king, and God told Samuel that uh, they were rejecting him, he was rejecting God. And so, uh, like God reminded them how he done brought them out of Egypt, they walked across the Red Sea. Out in the wilderness and not all over the kingdom that had them in bondage. Yeah. And, and, and they got told a man or God, you know. And this is the same thing that we're doing on today. Lord, the world is more attracted to us. And then what uh, God got to offer. You don't believe it. Walk up in the church on Sunday morning. Mm hmm. You got so many empty pews, you know, there, you know. Uh, and the fans in law, you drive down to the fair when they don't work. Yeah. You, 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 you got to stay, you got to drive in line for God no how long. You stand in line for God no how long to pay for that ticket. Come on up. Well, you can get walk right on up in the church house. You heard what God got to offer. Uh, we get some great words, Pastor. Amen, amen. Hey, great word. Great word. Yeah, yeah. Look, look in that fair stand, uh, Pastor McGrath. I'm going to be there standing in line for a hot for a corn, though. Oh, yeah, I'll be there myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will also be at church on Sunday morning. Yeah, my 
Get your, get your follow category on our personal line. Get my cards on there. I will do that, right. sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel free to. Yeah, all right. At this time, we're turning back over to Pastor Lyle. He's going to close us out. He's going to come with the remark and close us out. Amen. I'd just like to say thank all y'all for being on tonight. Um, as always, when we share the Lord, we all get to learn something new. We all get to see some more insight into his word and just the simple fact that God was that good to us and we rejected him should make us ask ourselves now, why are we still rejecting him when he is still that good to us? And we know man is wicked. Man has continued to be wicked. Why would we run from God's will over us and look at man's will over us? Some of the, the lessons that we can learn and these Verses and passages are simple and plain and clear. God is first. He Amen. has been there for us all the time. So we need to start coming out and understanding, stop doing man's thing and do God's thing. Hey, who, who woke you up this morning? It wasn't a man or a woman. Who fed you today? It wasn't a man or a woman. Who provided for you? It wasn't a man or a woman. They may have been in the game play, but trust and believe this is all God's. And, and why would you go from the creator to go to the created and say, okay, I want you. And that's uh, what that's really true. happened in this passage. Although the Lord selected, uh -huh. we were running from the created, the creator to ask for the created. Uh -huh. uh, I can tell you, you'll have a much better life, both temporal and eternal, if you stick with the creator. So that's my words for tonight. Uh, Pastor Jimmy, would you pray us out? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I will. I want to let you know too that uh, I'm able to pick up Yo, sir, I'm on Facebook. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I pick up a message from you every now and then. I listen to your preacher a little bit on Facebook. Amen, amen. We just uh, sharing. Uh, 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 we have a father, Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Father God, for another Sunday. Uh, that been talked to us before Sunday. When we walk in the doors on Sunday morning, we already know what the Sunday school lesson is all about. And we pray that you get manifested in our souls, Father God, that we can try to live by your rules and regulations and, 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 and understand your way, Father God, and turn our back on the world, Father God, and, and, and follow in Jesus' footsteps. We pray that. Uh, we will share your word with someone else who don't know you in the part of our sin. Sometimes we are the only walking, we are the only Bible that they will ever know about, Father God. Uh, we share with them, Heavenly Father. We just want to say thank you. Praying for the sick and shed in and, and, and the homeless and, and everybody, Father God, to have breath in their body. They're being blessed on top of the earth. On this day, Father God, we said in the prayer, Father God, you know all about the trials and tribulations that they going through with, Father God. That, that means that you know how to bless. You can bless each and every one all at the same time. And we get petition to you in the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 Y'all have a blessed evening. Amen.